Hello everyone and welcome to this session of blockchain tutorial part 2. My name is Saurabh and I am part of the Simply Learn team. So let's get started today and let's see what's in store for us. So hey, thanks for coming back to explain how blockchain work. So in our last session, just let's do a re quick recap what we have learned. So let's look down the memory lane and discover what we had learned. We learned about what blockchain is. So a blockchain is a list of records which stores data publicly in a chronological order. It applies security using cryptography. It is not controlled by a centralized authority. Any information on a blockchain network is accessible to anyone on the network. And as it is a distributed ledger, it's a shared ledger. Everyone has the copy of the data. So these are the primary attributes of a blockchain. Also, you learned about Bitcoin and how it works. Just to do a quick recap, it was introduced in 2009 by someone or a group of pseudonymous people known as Satoshi Nakamoto. It aimed to solve the problems faced by fiat currencies with the help of blockchain technology. So the objective was to introduce a new asset class of cryptocurrencies which can be used in day-to-day -day transactions. Now, as of in 2018, there are more than 1600 cryptocurrencies that follow the concept of Bitcoin and blockchain and are very popular in our day-to-day -day lives. Now, let's talk about the features of blockchain. Is a public distributed ledger. It uses a hashing encryption to encrypt all the information on the blockchain. It uses proof of work consensus algorithm for a consensus mechanism and it works with the concept of mining in order to reward the miners for keeping them and maintaining the sanity of the network. And finally, about how you can implement blockchain in a banking system. So we talked about how to implement a KYC based blockchain decentralized app and how it allows you to create a decentralized banking system where a KYC done by a one bank can be leveraged by another bank and the customer does not have to go through multiple KYC iterations with each and every bank whom he or she wants to transact with. Now we will get a little deeper into blockchain and today we will talk about these topics. We will talk about what is a candidate block. We will talk about Byzantine fault tolerance which was one of the earlier consensus mechanisms. Then we will talk about the problem of if we have to add two blocks at the same time, then how does blockchain handles that? Then we will talk about the concept of forking, what are soft forks, what are hard forks, and other areas where blockchain is getting used, what is the future of blockchain, and what are the upcoming blockchain jobs and the profiles which are upcoming in the market. And then in the end, we will do a quick demo on how to create a smart contract and deploy it for a particular use case. Now, before a block can be mined, a miner has to make a very important decision. Which transactions would be added to his block? So before transactions are added to the blockchain, they are collected in a temporary container called a memory pool. The miners select transactions from this pool and they put it in a temporary block called candidate block. So basically the candidate block is a temporary block which a miner hopes to add to a blockchain. It's a candidate to be added to a blockchain. So the candidate block holds transactions that the miner selects from the memory pool. The miner then tries to be the first person to find the nonce value that satisfy the hash requirements. Now the question comes, if someone in a blockchain wanted to input the wrong data by spreading wrong information around, would he or she be able to get away with it? And that's why we had something known as Byzantine fault tolerance. So in order to maintain the sanity of the network and to have the correct consensus, there was something called as Byzantine fault tolerance consensus algorithm. To understand this, you need to know what the Byzantine general's problem is. So let's imagine a Byzantine general and three other lieutenants need to take over this town. However, they are at different places and can't directly communicate with each other. So here we have the general and his three lieutenants. The general has to ensure that all lieutenants follow the same order he or she gives them to attack or to retreat. Now, this has to be ensured even if one of the lieutenants is a traitor. 
so this is the byzantine general's problem that how does the general communicates the correct decision which he has taken to all his lieutenants in his network irrespective if someone is a traitor in this case a traitor could ruin the unity of the group by sending different messages to different lieutenants now here we can see the general is giving all his lieutenants the command to attack the traitor could ruin this by sending every other lieutenant the command to retreat the opposite now in this situation the traitor would make others believe that the general asked them to retreat so as we can see the lieutenant in brown is the traitor and he could communicate to other lieutenants the wrong information and make them act on his behalf as a traitor in themselves now this would cause the lieutenants to retreat and the general's attack to fail so how do we tackle this the only way an attack or a retreat will be successful is by having a majority supporting that particular action to achieve this the lieutenants keep a tally of the orders they receive so in this scenario the general sends the attack order to each of his lieutenants the lieutenants in turn collect the order they receive and pass it on to the lieutenant near to them so each lieutenant will pass this order to the nearest lieutenant the traitor also will do the same but sends the retreat order to the other lieutenant however this will not be successful because each lieutenant now has a majority of attack and minority of retreat so this shows that the majority of the lieutenants would follow the general's command and the attack will be successful the scenario i mentioned before is byzantine fault tolerance now the same situation can be encountered in blockchain as well the traitor would add invalid transactions into the blockchain the traitor would send the inconsistent information to other nodes in a blockchain this would affect the reliability of blockchain network blockchain are able to achieve byzantine fault tolerance with the help of proof of work let's see how it is effective it is effective because the process of adding a block to a blockchain is a work intensive process which involves a hashing algorithm the process is very hard very computative because it is heavily reliant on value obtained from the existing blockchain to have any meaningful impact the hacker would have to take a lot of time resources producing sufficient proof of work interesting imagine if you and i were miners and we both add a block to the blockchain at the same time how do we handle such a situation so although this does not happen very often there is a way to decide whose block should be added to the blockchain in an ideal scenario you just need to be the first one to find the hash value you need to be the first miner to generate that hash value and win the block so adding two blocks at the same time the hash value of the block only needs to be within the predetermined limit if the generated hash value is less than the target then the value is accepted and the block is added to the blockchain but if it is greater than the target then the value is denied and the block is not added to the blockchain but in this case if two people have obtained a satisfactory hash value at the same time so miner 1 and miner 2 were able to find the hash which was less than the target then what will happen whether miners one block will get added to the blockchain or miners two block will get added to the blockchain now 50% of the network has accepted miners one block and suppose rest has accepted miners two block so half of the network continues to work considering miners one block to be the right block and the other half network continues to work considering miners two block to be the right block however only one miners blockchain can be allowed to remain we cannot have two blockchains running it will defeat the purpose now this is achieved by selecting the subchain to which miners have first added a block so suppose miner 3 adds a new block to miners 1 blockchain this block now added by miner 3 is verified by everyone in the network it is then accepted as the dominant blockchain and is used by everyone else in the network the other version of the blockchain the miner 2 is completely discarded and the entire network now accepts miner 1's blockchain and we have now a single blockchain existing now this situation is also called an accidental fork so i heard about a version of bitcoin called bitcoin cash what's the difference between them 
there are other kinds too like bitcoin gold and bitcoin private these are all outcomes of a fork so what is a fork a fork is said to have taken place when a blockchain diverges into two potential paths a fork happens when the users of a network cannot come to an agreement with regards to a network's transaction details and the new rules to validate those transactions so there are two types of forks which can exist either it can be a soft fork or it can be a hard fork a soft fork occurs when a change in the software protocol makes new blocks added to the blockchain following the new rules but are backward compatible but in order to have a soft fork it requires a majority of the users to commit to that change to be successful so a soft fork could have multiple uses it could be for tighter rules it could be for cosmetic changes addition of new functions but not affecting the structure so consider the scenario where the accepted block size is to be reduced from 1 mb to 100 kb so first of all it has to be approved by a majority of the network now the old version will be running on 1 mb block size but once approved the new version will start working on a block size of 100 kb so anything which is less than 100 kb will be approved and will be added to the new block so over time people following the older version of the blockchain would be forced to move to the new one since none of their transactions would go through so basically people using the old blockchain they will be using the 1 mb block size their transactions will not succeed and they will be forced to use the 100 kb block now let's talk about hard fork a hard fork involves a change in the software protocol so radical that it forces a new blockchain to be created altogether so basically in a hard fork there will be two versions there will be one blockchain that has an upgraded and there will be a blockchain that has upgraded according to the new software protocols both these blockchains will be considered valid and legitimate the new path would follow new updated rules while the other one keeps following the old path so the old one will not be discarded and will remain into existence now bitcoin performed a hard fork on 1st august 2017 which created bitcoin cash so thereby both bitcoin and bitcoin cash remain existent now bitcoin cash was different from regular bitcoin because it increased the block size from 1 mb to 8 mb so thereby it helped reducing the transaction cost significantly lesser than that of the original bitcoin network now other than with bitcoin where else is blockchain used the other areas are for preventing voter fraud blockchain helps in ensuring that there is only one vote per person ensuring that the data is not being tampered with or any false alterations are done it helps creating an immutable ledger to record the votes as tallied so once a transaction or a vote is recorded it cannot be modified it is also used in quality assurance ensuring the products are of highest quality being able to identify problem areas easily so where do you think blockchain going to be used in the future so blockchain is seeing wide range of adoption amongst organizations as of now only 1% of all organizations have begun using blockchain technologies but this percentage is expected to increase in the next 5 years or so then there is a need for blockchain regulations the rules and regulations surrounding blockchain are not very clear for organizations to be comfortable using it and move towards faster adoption also there is a need for removing this negative speculations surrounding blockchain several industries fear that blockchain will disrupt their normal functioning and believe that the adoption of a blockchain system is in worth the effort and there is an increase in job opportunities for skilled personnel so as the technology is maturing there would be a huge requirement for individuals who can understand and implement the concepts of blockchain so what options do people have for jobs involving blockchain at the moment there are many job opportunities but the two most famous ones are blockchain architect and blockchain developer blockchain developer is a profile which requires designing implementing and supporting a distributed blockchain network analyze user requirements design technology around a certain business model to build and launch a blockchain network 
blockchain architect profile requires to design and architect blockchain industry solutions creates blockchain networks leveraging blockchain technology platforms produce high quality code based on project requirements conceptualize design and build blockchain frameworks and assets so let's have a quick demo on how to deploy a rating smart contract and have decentralized application running on a local blockchain network we will be using truffle and solidity to build this application so in order to build this application we should have installed truffle and ganache on our local system so this is a ganache client which is running on my local host it is running on port 8545 and network id 5778 whenever you run a ganache client it is preceded with 10 accounts and 100 ether balance now this is my movie rating app and in this app i am going to deploy a smart contract called rating.soul which is going to capture the ratings for a certain set of movies which i'll predefine and the users will be able to set the ratings on a blockchain network in a decentralized fashion and we will be able to see that in every transaction a block is getting generated in my ganache client so in my movie rating app under the rating folder i will run the command truff compile and it will compile my smart contract rating.soul now the next command which i have to run is truff migrate now at this instance the truff migrate command will deploy my smart contract on my ganache client so if you see there are four blocks which have been created and my contract was created in this transaction and this is the address of the contract at which my contract is deployed so i can go back to my command prompt and say truff console and check the address of my contract so this is 0x695 which is this address now when i deployed my smart contract i had given the entry of deployment in a file called deploy contract.js under rating migrations and in that i had given this entry i had given the path to my rating solidity file and i had initialized my smart contract with three movies star wars avatar and inception and given some predefined gas now once these steps are done and i know the address at which my contract is deployed i will copy that and paste it in the file of ethereum setup.js which is lying under my rating app ui source folder and i'll just change this address now once this rating address is changed i have to go back to my movie rating app folder under app ui i have to give the command npm start Now my application is up and running on localhost 3000 and as you see I am able to do the voting and at each rating level my block is going to increase. Block 6, inception block 7 and as and when my rating is increasing a block is getting added. So this demonstrates the usage of Truffle and Ganache in order to build your decentralized app wow blockchain is amazing thanks for explaining these things to me i'm glad i could help you i hope you all had a great session and i'll meet you in my next session thank you hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here